Welcome back to another episode of the Fresh Crits of Melbourne. We are not back anywhere. This is the first time seeing this. Uh, we're at the Tour of Mansfield 2022, so last year's edition of Tour of Mansfield. And I thought I'd go back to the archives and jump in the Wayback Machine because Tour of Mansfield is, as of this recording, only about just over a month, maybe a little bit over a month away. And I thought I'd show you guys what it's like because it's a great race. It's a three, it's a two day, three stage race um, where they're the first stage is a TT. You've got a relatively flat stage in stage two that it finishes on a climb, which is this one we're going to watch. And then the last stage also has a couple of sprint points, but that ends on a mountaintop, Mount Buller. So whole bunch of uh, different things that are going to um, you know, challenge all different type of riders if you're a sprinter, a puncher, a climber, or a TT specialist. Currently, we're in the neutral zone. We're, being, we're waiting for that red flag to drop so we can race. So everyone's just pushing a nice, easy tempo. Nothing too drastic. So whilst we're waiting, let's go and have a bit of a look at the breakdown of the course. Alrighty, so the race starts in the just outside the city of Mansfield. We ride in the neutral zone for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so until the red flag drops, and then we ride along Mount Buller Road. Um, on the way out, there is one sprint point, or there was last year, and then as we hit the turnaround, we come back. There's a bit of a climb. I'll show you the elevation map shortly. Um, there is a sprint point and a KOM point to be collected along Mount Buller Road. We eventually make that right-hand turn into Graves Road, which also doubles as the TT stage. And then eventually you make a left-hand turn in probably the nastiest road of them all. And where the stage finishes at the top of Mount Tommy Road, which is about one and a bit kilometers of 4.7%. Uh, Mind you, that might not sound like much, but after you've been riding for well over an hour in heats that are well over 30 degrees, it feels a lot harder than it probably should be. As for the elevation, well, it's pretty straightforward. There it is. So all the way out, it is a constant grind uphill until you get to that turnaround point where it's a really fast uh, ride back until you make that right-hand corner. Um, and you need that recovery because, like I said, that old Tommy Road right at the very end of the race is where things can be blown apart and you can lose a good amount of seconds over your other GC contenders. So that's a bit of the breakdown. I hope that gives you a bit of an idea of what the race is going to look like. Now, let's skip ahead. As you can see, the van's taken off. Let's get stuck into some racing. Oh, but before you do, please, if you like this stuff, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I love everyone getting involved. If you see yourself, comment below. You know the drill. But let's get stuck into some good racing. And it's at this moment that uh, R33 superstar Elliot Smith has had enough of sitting in the peloton for 10 minutes. He's had enough of talking to the guys in the Peaks outfit. He's like, all right, I'm done with this. I'm going to launch a attack essentially 60 kilometers from the finish line. He felt good. And with me sitting on the front, I was able to actually hold the, the tempo quite at an easy pace. Look, 37 kilometers an hour. He's probably averaging 45, which is Smithy just riding tempo. You know, that he's established that break. I want to try to bring that speed down as much as I can whilst looking like you are spinning a high tempo. So that means, you know, raise that cadence um, and act like you're working hard, but, you know, you're actually, you know, not doing much at all. And He's established a pretty good break there. That's already probably 10, 15 seconds off the front and nothing is happening. And you could see the trick with getting away that easily is because uh, we're locked into a single lane of the road, Elliot was near the front, he was second wheel, and basically didn't really need to do much before he just launched off the front. And now you can see in the rear cam, we've got Amp Racing. Uh, that's Peak Racing and coming up alongside is the Amp Racing team. These guys are in um, Masters A. They've seen him launch off the front and they're like, all right, well, we need to do something about this. Let's work together and try to bring him back. And straight away, we've spiked up to like 300 watts. Here comes Ogilvy, the, the road captain, their GC rider. Um, and now they are responsible to bring this back. And I, I'm i just going to sit in. I'm not going to do any work because he's my teammate. So interesting, um, interesting part of the race with only 10 minutes in. There's already a bit of action. But you've seen nothing yet. We're going to skip a little bit further forward until we see the disintegration of these two teammates. So let's skip a little bit forward and uh, see that all blow apart. 
It does not take long for the harmony between Amp Racing with Ogilvy and Page on the same team and Peaks, uh, Dan Peck from Peaks Racing as Ogilvy launches a huge attack off the front from sec second wheel. Dan Peck has to follow because Ogilvy is a GC threat. And for some strange reason, Pagey, also on Amp Racing, decides to try to go with Dan Peck. Now, you just wonder if... Pagey, who's in front of me now, doesn't decide to, to go with this break. He actually forces me to bridge across because Ogilvy's a GC contender. Peck's a GC contender after doing the TT before this race and actually coming first. Um, I need to do the team thing to protect Speedy, who's in my rear cam, who's my GC uh, leader. Um, it just puts everything in a really tricky situation. It makes my life easier that Pagey's going across because I don't have to do any work to try to bring this one back. So, Again, we're back to where we were. The Peloton's now once together. Everything's been glued back. And, um, you know, it's all good again. There's all good in the Peloton. You can see Smithy just off the front there with a small gap. Very interesting times here. And we're going to skip ahead just a couple of minutes to some more interesting times where more attacks happen. So make sure you stay tuned and we'll pick it up there. So Elliot Smith is still kept on a tight leash, still up the road. Um, his gap is stretching between, you know, 10 to 30 seconds. Uh, you see Dan Peck there in the Peaks Racing Kit. Um, he's got a couple of the bike lengths, and this is a time where Ogilvy decides to launch an attack, and this is a classic move from Ogilvy, the seated acceleration. His ability to do this, stay seated, it doesn't even look like he's putting in that much work, but you're spiking up to 800 watts just to stay in the wheels is something in, in super impressive. And if you're not clued into it, you can see in the rear cam right now the sort of damage it does to the peloton and how everyone is now struggling to stay in the wheels. So it's these constant attacks that he throws out there is what's going to slowly break the peloton apart and um, and riders will start... You'll see riders at the back starting to be uh, dabbed off the back. So... <laughs> it's non-stop here, and you would think that um, Team Aero would be wanting to, you know, drive some sort of rolling turns in order to bring Elliot back, who's up the front of the road collecting points. So, yeah, we'll skip a little bit further forward ahead. I just wanted to highlight not only uh, that seat of acceleration, which is really, really good, but the bit of misorganization that's going on in the peloton at the moment. But enough of this. Let's skip forward to some real action. We're going to pick this up at the uh, first sprint point of this race. Let's go from there. We're picking this up with about 700 meters to go for the first bunch of sprint points. So we're basically going for second because with Elliot Smith up the road still, he collected maximum points. I'm sprinting for second in Masters A. So I've found myself right in, in the mix, basically. I'm getting pushed further and further back in the peloton. It is so hard to move up um, when you're this boxed in. You can see this sign here on the left for sprinting 500 meters. There it is. And now I'm trying to find an exit strategy. How am I going to get out of this and get myself to the front so I can get a clear sprinting lane? You can see Speedy here trying to drive the pace up. He's trying to do me a favor to create some space for me. Meanwhile, we've got guys jumping over the, the, the double lines. We've got this guy here who's bouncing around in the saddle with all the power going elsewhere. Derek has a, a, almost touches bars and has a stack. I finally find some room over the line. Not too sure if this is illegal. Please comment below. Find some space where I'm able to open up the sprint and take, essentially, win the bunch sprint, but take second, um, second point. So... A lot of carnage uh, and a lot going on for that sort of sprint point. And that's what happened when you are riding in a road race like this and you're sharing the road with um, Warren Masters A and sharing it with B grade, Elite B, it clogs up the road for people sprinting, not necessarily against each other. So you just have to, you know, the smartest thing in that sort of situation is with the sprint, a kilometer two kilometers away. You want to be at least second or third wheel from the front, making sure you're keeping um, you know, out of the wind, but keeping up at the front of the bike race so you're not going to be trapped like I did there. So just a lot, another little uh, mental note for myself when uh, Tour of Mansfield rolls around in uh, a little bit over a month's time. As you can see in the sign on the left-hand side, we are one kilometer from the next round of sprint points. That are on offer. So currently the standings, uh, Elliot's got maximum points. He's in my rear cam now. 
He's uh, he's first in sprints. I'm second in Masters A and then Elite B. I'm not sure what's going on. Doesn't matter. But at this moment, I'm thinking, all right, well, uh, designated sprinter, hopefully me. I will be... <laughs> no, Elliot, you lead me out for this one. But, of course, Smithy's got other ideas. And he comes up beside me and says, hey, mate, you're going to lead me out for this one, right? I'm like, well, you, I guess you're winning on sprint points. Let's make it happen. Let's get you in the green jersey. So 500 meters to go. I think on position really, really well. Front of the bike race, keeping a nice, easy tempo, 250 watts, um, keeping the pace. It's Look, it's not very high at all, but that's absolutely fine. When we have that quick discussion there, I ramp it up. We put it up to 500 watts. We want to have something that's sustainable for the next you know, 30 seconds so that gives me enough energy for me to take Smithy all the way to the finish line. As we get closer with 200 meters to go, I now give it an all-out effort trying to stay not so aero so Smithy can jump into my wheel. I pull over to the right-hand side, leave that left-hand side open from him to finish the work off, which I think he does. I think he picks up second, um, but gets uh, still leaves him at the end of this race with maximum points. So overall, that was a pretty successful sort of sprint for R33. We're really, really happy with that. And now it's all about nullifying these next attacks that go off the front, taking advantage of the sprinter's uh, accelerated sort of effort there. So, yep, that's it. Sprint points are done. Now it's time for the end of the race. All righty, so we're all back together. We've made the right-hand turn onto Graves Avenue, which also doubles as the TT circuit. And unfortunately, we've lost the batteries to the front cam. Yes, I know, I'm as devastated as you are, and when Tour of Mansfield comes, rolls around again in a few weeks' time, trust me, I'll be saving the uh, the batteries on the front camp for the final finish because this is where things start to really heat up. You can see everyone's really bunched together trying to push and hustle for position because you really want to enter the last 500 metres right at the front of the group because... When you take that left-hand corner, as you can see a little bit on the map there, into Old Tolmy Road, you hit the climb. And, it, and you come around that corner and you look up at it and it's basically a wall with only a gradient of 6.4%. But right at the start of that climb, it ramps right up to 11%. And after 64 kilometers of racing in hot, hot conditions... It feels a hell of a lot harder to that. So it's really important that you get some really good position as we come into that last bit of the climb. Now, obviously, it's going to be quite hard to show you what that climb looks like from behind. So what we might do is we'll skip forward to the last 500 meters just so you can see the pain on everybody's faces right at the end of that race. Ignore the distance left. There's about 200 meters. I've just been uh, just overtaking my teammate Speedy and making that last ditch effort to the uh, to the line with 200 meters to go. You can see Murray Spink working really really hard. He's a dedicated climber. He's staying seated, trying to keep his heart rate down. I'm maxing out 190 beats. The the heat is killing me. I've run out of water. I'm an absolute mess. And I'm just trying to stay on my bike and trying to work as hard as I can just so I can gain a few seconds on the other riders behind us. There's only a few hundred meters left and the whole peloton has been decimated. You can see everybody's absolutely cooked. There's a sign on the road, 100 meters left. Now you get out of the saddle. Now you want to drive it right and push right over the top. There goes Rob. He's gone out the back door. He's cooked. I'm onto the gravel. I'm a mess. 190 beats left. There's got to be only 50 meters and we finally get there you can see a few more riders absolutely blowing up the top of that hill it's pretty it's a bit of a false flat here but it drains on the legs you get to the finish line there it is and you're absolutely shattered you can see everyone's faces they're absolutely cooked so that's the bike race that's it that is tour of mansfield stage number two I picked up fifth in Masters A in this stage, but completely blow up on Buller. Maybe there'll be a video of that one soon. I really hope you enjoyed watching that. If you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. I will be seeing you all for the next update of Fresh Crits of Melbourne. Thanks again, guys. Ciao.